Welcome to Integrity Inspire, your daily dose of inspiration and motivation, featuring the bright and talented members of the Integrity Marketing Group family. Now, here's your host, Integrity co-founder and CEO, Brian W. Adams. So excited to uh, kick this uh, year off with another Inspire podcast. Really appreciate everybody jumping on today. I hope everybody had a very happy new year. I know... uh, my family and I did, and uh, excited about 2021. We, uh, just as we had talked uh, previously, we finished the year in 2020, um, just really in record format, which I don't think many companies were able to do in in the world, much less uh, in the insurance business. But uh, what we've been able to accomplish together was really, truly quite remarkable. And what we've got planned for 2021 is even bigger and better. And to kick off our time today, we uh, wanted to, with Kendall being out, wanted to continue to bring out some of our former Integrity Idol contestants and finalists uh, to give us an update on what they've been up to and then also uh, continue to sing and share more about the, uh, with, with the Integrity family. And we've had some incredible uh, fun by doing this. In fact, I'll tell you, I was at Thomas Art's office last week, <clears throat> and I was uh, at a meeting, and walking through there, there were, um, I think there were five contestants, is that right, Ann, that uh, had been through there, and we had a little okay. impromptu Integrity Idol um, <laughs> integrity idol fun, and we had S-Dub, we had, uh, we had Kool-Aid. Um, what, what are some of the other names that uh, that that joined us? Uh, and the, we the had we had Mitch, Mitch, Mitch we had oh, Matt Warren, yep. yeah, yeah, Mitch, Mitch um, Taylor Swift, and then Erica Witt, yeah, all five. Erica, Erica, and, Erica nailed it. We we had Matt actually do some improv like acting as part of his. We uh, it was it was a lot of fun. <clears throat> Just literally walking through the building and. I'm not sure exactly how how it all kind of came together, but it was a blast. And so we're excited today to have Miss Candy Golden from Elder Care uh, joining us. Uh, Candy, you're there with us. I am. Candy, we got it. Next time I'm at Elder Care, we need to do this for you. You and your daughter actually both um, both auditioned on this. We had some others as well. Uh, but but uh, next time I'm at Elder Care, make sure you remind me. We'll just have a little improv. I actually packed up okay. some gifts. But, uh, <laughs> at, uh, we, uh, Ann and I made up some gifts while we were while we were uh, there in, at Thomas Arts, and so uh, we'll have to we'll have to do that uh, at Elder Care next. Maybe we'll get John Bettis and Jeremy Pielemeyer to sing too. Oh, that would be a treat. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna pass out some big gifts to make that happen. But, uh, why? It takes a lot of bribery to get there, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe they should pay us not to hear them sing. That's what that's what I would do. If, if somebody if somebody tried to get me sing, I'd probably be like, "Hold on, let me pay you so you don't have to sing." But uh, well, hey, I loved having you on the Inspire podcast during Integrity Idol, your story, your uh, just your enthusiasm, your incredible voice was so much fun. I know you, were, you. You, were, uh, you, you really were passionate about the Sharing Jed Foundation and what all they did. And I got to tell you, I got one of the nicest yeah. cards from them um, thanking us for, for just recognizing them and for including them in this whole process. And so, um, tell everybody we, we've had a lot of integrity families uh, since family members since we we did this. Tell everybody a little bit about Sharon Jed Foundation and why it's so important to you and your family. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Sharing Jed uh, was actually established after uh, my cousin Lori and her husband Josh and their um, son Jed. Jed was diagnosed with a rare form of cancer, and he um, actually was. Uh, it was kind of sudden, and um, as any you know diagnosis, it took them by shock and surprise. But they wanted to turn all of the donations and things that were coming in to help them into something when they were done. And so they established the Sharing Jed Foundation, which has um, just unbelievable things that they have done for people 
um, even with what the donations that Integrity gave, um, I, I can't even express my gratitude to a, such a giving family that we have at Integrity. It was an amazing trip to go to Children's Hospital and to hear Lori, you know, she would call me and say, guess what we got to do today because of the donations from Integrity. Oh, how how incredible that all was. It was, a, it was so much fun. Um, yes. And... And such a worthy cause, and we loved uh, we loved hearing that story. In fact, I, I was we were joking about John Bettis singing. Um, John just said it would be worth a lot of money not to hear him sing. So I think uh, <laughs> I think I would I think I would have uh, <laughs> next time we raise funds. Maybe we should. Maybe that's what we ought to do. Is because think about that. <laughs> we'll pay not to have to sing. <laughs> but uh, the good news is we got people with great voices. Uh, like yourself, and uh, you you just blew blew us away whenever you sang oh, last time. Oh, thank you. What are you going to sing? <laughs> what are you going to be singing uh, this time? <clears throat> uh, today, I think I'm going to sing something inspirational. Um, I'm going to do "I Will Rise." Oh, awesome! There's a peace I've come to know, though my heart and flesh may fail. There's an anchor for my soul, I can say it is well, Jesus has overcome, and the grave is overwhelmed, the victory is won. He is risen from the dead, and I will rise when He calls my name. No more sorrow, no more pain. I will rise on the eagle's wings before my God, fall on my knees and rise, I will rise. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that just, uh, oh, my. Your voice is, like, shocking. It, 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 it comes from, like, listen, are, you, are you in the office and you just did that? I am. <laughs> Can you hear them? Your confidence, your confidence in your office. I think I heard Jennifer yelling in the background. Uh, your, your, yes. your and your your oh my gosh, that just uh it's unexpected. It was uh it was beautiful. Thank you so well, much. Well I am happy to fill in for Kendall, but I I can't wait for her to get back to <laughs> <laughs> Well we're we're all I, no one is missing her as much as I am, but uh, we are super excited to to be able to share uh, all of these uh, voices, and we're just going to have to, we're going to have to continue the, we're, we're going to have to have a, a second annual uh, Integrity Idol competition, I think, uh, <laughs> next year, maybe something like that. But, hey, thank you so much. Really appreciate thank it. Thank you. You, have, you and your family have a wonderful 2021, and appreciate all you do. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much, Integrity family. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Well, Man, we have so many amazing partners here at Integrity, and being the best means partnering with the best. And most times that goes beyond just business, as you hear with these type of uh, these type of people who join us to sing and some of our partner story, stories that uh, you've heard. And today we're talking to one of Integrity's newest partners, Jay Ebert, who's president of Best Value Insurance Services. And along with his wife, Stephanie, they – are two of the absolute best people that you'll ever meet. Uh, they are honest and hardworking. They've grown their business the right way. Uh, they share a lot of the same core values that we do here at Integrity. And just recently, Jay and his team decided to join Integrity, and we are thrilled about that decision. Jay and his family have quietly built and nurtured an impressive business from the ground up. And Best Value Insurance Services, is known for its honest, respectable, hardworking reputation. Jay also has an aspiring passion for serving agents and making sure that their needs are always met. 
Not only that, but he's one of the those people that is constantly giving back. Jay and Stephanie are always looking for ways to help others and give back. And, and I think that <clears throat> because of that, Best Value is a leading independent distributor of life and health insurance products focusing on the uh, at or near retirement age Americans. And Jay and his team work with hundreds of independent agents who serve uh, more than 15,000 Americans annually. And in 2020, Best Value expects they, they close the year with uh, placing over $30 million of annualized premium with their insurance carriers. And now the Jay and his team are part of Integrity. They can keep that incredible momentum going and reach new heights of success. So, Jay, on behalf of everyone here at Integrity, we're honored uh, to partner with you and have you as part of our family. Uh, and I'm excited to have you join us on this Inspire podcast. Jay, thanks for joining us, my friend. Yeah, oh, Thanks, Brian. Really appreciate it. Wow. <laughs> you make me uh, feel like I'm bigger than I am. I mean, I mean wow. Look, shock. <laughs> you, you are. You know, listen, you're – your passion for serving agents, and I love, and it really came through in the video that we had for our uh, partnership announcement, um, where you talked about um, just growing your business the right way and being available for the agents at all times, no matter what they need. Um, and you did that just, you just, you articulated that everything I think that we all stand for. And we're all super passionate about, and you really articulated that in such an incredible way. Uh, tell us a little bit more about where your commitment and hard work uh, comes from. Um, well, you know, I was uh, when I was told I was going to be on the, the podcast, and so I started making some notes. And, you know, I was thinking back a long time ago when I was actually in high school, and I, I wanted to play basketball into college and, you know, go on. And, you know, my grades were awful. I didn't understand why people needed to learn algebra. That was just so much waste. <laughs> um, and I don't think I've ever used it. Um, but there was a teacher that said that, he told my parents at the time, he said that I go by a different drummer than almost any, any kid that he had taught up to that point. And, you know, I, I don't think my parents thought that was pretty cool um, at the time. But, you know, look back is 2020. But I've always felt, you know, if you do the right thing for the right reason, um, if you're committed, you know, husband, loving husband, be a role model for your kid, uh, especially when times are tough. So I'm how to persevere. Um, don't try to cut corners and never heap praise on yourself. Um, you know, people look down on that. And I've always felt that if I worked harder than anybody else, you know, I may not have gone to college. I always feel I'm not the smartest person in the room, but I always feel that I'll dominate in work ethic. And, you know, sports has always been a big part of my world, my, my kids, my wife. And I was reading about Kevin Green, who Hall of Fame uh, yeah. just passed away in the NFL. And he said, you know, he wasn't the biggest and he wasn't the fastest. But as long as you have a motor and you have heart, you will overcome limitations. And so I was, you know, reading that, and it really hit me like, wow, you know, there, there's there's so much out there for us to accomplish every single day. Just work for it. And, uh, you know, so when I graduated from high school, wasn't going to college, I ended up working at a lumber yard. And uh, from day one, I wasn't really good with authority, you know, working for somebody else. And I just, you know, I, I looked at like, you know, I would I would read, I'd do, you know, articles, things like that. And I was reading about like Donald Trump had made, you know, his dad gave him $100,000 and he made it into millions at the time. And I thought, you know, anybody has the same opportunity. And so, yeah. you know, <clears throat> I was at the start and I, you know, ended up, just out of the blue, talking to the general manager of the Bellingham Mariners. And, you know, I was like, why can't I, knowing that Ken Griffey Jr. was going to be coming to the Bellingham Mariners, and he was like a, a phenom, everybody wanted part of it. But I got in early, talked to the general manager. He got me in contact with the Seattle Mariners. Seattle Mariners got me in contact with Major League Baseball. 
and I ended up getting the right to make King Griffey Jr.'s first baseball card. And, what? you know, I'm like, I was, when I was working every day at the lumber yard and I was looking at different businesses and, you know, how they could succeed even with poor leadership and how much bigger they could have been if they were actually run, run well, run like a company that should be, you know, you care about the people that are coming through the door. Um, but, you know, I took that opportunity and I made the Ken Griffey, you know, I made the Bellini Mariner set, 15,000 sets. And it cost me a dollar twenty-five, and that included the rights to you know I had to pay Major League Baseball, I had to pay Seattle Mariners, and they wouldn't let me just make King Griffey Jr.'s card. It was mandatory. I made the entire team's set, and so I did that, and I ended up doing it out of my garage where a lot of you know business owners start from. I'm you know packaging these things up every single night. I'm shipping them out selling them at $5.95 plus shipping, you know, per set. And so there's a little bit of profit there and sold all 15,000 sets worldwide. The Major League Baseball came out and destroyed the plate so there no more sets could be made. And, you know, it's funny, I was just looking on uh, eBay, the set, and it sells between $399 to $899 per set. So I was a uh, I guess that's pretty good <laughs> return on investment for a lot of people. <clears throat> and, uh, wow. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I took the, I took the profit and I started a sports memorabilia shop and, uh, international sport card company. And what's funny, Brian, is my, uh, first day I did $16 in sales, but my rent was 1600 And I'm like, man, I need a hundred days a month to make this freaking thing work. And a uh, little, little nerve-wracking, uh, that's for sure. Uh, but, you know, you have to take the opportunities that are around you. And where I grew up, we were about 20 minutes away from the Canadian border. And so I started, I thought, why don't we buy cards down here in the U.S. and take them up to Canada, and, which I did. And, you know, it was became a wholesale business, a lot of hockey cards and by about 15 months later, we were doing $100,000 a month in sales. So, you know, again, I always just felt if you work harder than anybody else, see what your competition has out there, you'll be successful. And, and you know, so I, I, you know, I look at it, I guess I was, and I uh, kept that going for five years. Then I sold it, bought an espresso stand right before the big bubble for coffee. And, and plus you got to get up at like three in the morning and that just wasn't working for me. <laughs> and uh, my, uh, my agent at Mutual Omaha called and said, Hey, I need somebody to come in and take a test to see if you're good at insurance. You know, he goes, I got a quota and sure I'll be in, I'll, I'll come by and do it. And I guess I did really well uh, because they flew out and said I had scored the highest on their, their little profile test. And I was at Mutual of Omaha, and I got me an insurance, and, and I've been there ever since, 1991. Wow. Wow. <clears throat> you know, one, one of the things I've marveled at uh, throughout this Inspire podcast is we've talked to so many of our incredible partners um, is just the fact that every one of them <clears throat> pretty much has had the same kind of philosophy of, Humility and hard work. And whenever you take that hard work and humility and you combine those together and say, <clears throat> I may not be the smartest guy. I may not be the, um, you know, most well educated or come from the best background, but I'm going to outwork you. Um, that whenever you take that combination, that people generally always succeed. Um, and, and, and I, I'll tell you, for me personally, it's been inspiring to listen to these, these people. And that's kind of been my story a lot as well is, is, you know, I, I didn't have the most education. I didn't, you know, have a silver spoon in my mouth growing up, but it's one of those things I still feel this way is, is I'm going to outwork anybody and, and, uh, um, and, and realize that that can get you a long ways. And, and that's what we've seen with so many people. And so I love hearing uh, this story, and, and the other thing that we we found is that most people kind of stumbled into this business. Um, 
I mean, we heard Clay Legette talking about growing up working in a foundry. We had, um, you know, Lenny Anderson growing up working at um, <clears throat> at um, uh, in, in a tin. He was selling uh, tin siding door to door and and some other things. Um, and you hear these these legends in the business that uh, that all of a sudden you know have kind of risen up. Uh, just by <clears throat> working hard, having humility, and, uh, and and hearing your story reminds me a lot of those. Um, I don't think we've had anybody who's ever created a, a sports memorabilia business, but now it makes sense because when, when we were talking about with Steve Young <clears throat> about getting an autograph for you, you wanted you were the only one that ever wanted a Tampa Bay Buccaneers signed Steve Young autograph which most people don't even realize Steve played for the Buccaneers for a very short time. Uh, but now it makes sense on, cause you, you know how, how uh, rare, rare those are. And, and I'll tell you, Steve doesn't like signing them. Um, he's not very, <laughs> very big on that. So the fact that, uh, you know, we got you one of those was quite, quite, uh, uh, you know, quite the unique request for, for Steve, but uh, it all kind of comes together uh, now. Um, and I, I love to hear <clears throat> how people take their early experiences and then can, you know, really uh, get those, uh, get into the insurance business and try to use that experience of, of entrepreneurship uh, to continue to grow. So, so you got into the business with, with Mutual of Omaha. Um, and you, you, you know, one of the things I love about what you and Stephanie have built there um, is, is this idea of just always doing the right thing, um, always being available whether an agent needs you there at, at midnight. It's because I think you were an agent and you are an agent, um, and you understand that, that they're the customer first. But one of the things I also love <clears throat> about you guys is is your spirit of giving back. Um, and that's something that we really hold dear here at Integrity is, is just kind of this open-handedness that uh, we want to continue to, to give back. Can you talk a little bit about where that um, that commitment of service comes from? Um, well, you know, when I was at Mutual of Omaha, and I was there from 91 to 2004, and from 97 to 2004, I was associate general agent. And, you know, one thing I always remember is you always want to remember what it's like being an agent and living on commission. And, right. you know, when I started Best Value, you know, in, in, in 2004, myself and the other uh, general agent, we were recruited to go to the Guardian and take over an agency that was last and everything, and, you know, for life and DI. And at that point, I thought, you know, why don't we start a brokerage, pay more than anybody else, so that helps the agent. And then take those the, the gems, those really nuggets that you, you can see that are going to just, that could sell anything and, and be really good at and proficient, and pull those agents from that health side and put them in and plug and play over into the Guardian doing life, you know, annuities and, and disability. And, you know, the first three years we recruited about 80 agents. We were on the map. We were getting all these accolades. And, you know, from 04 to, to 07, we were, we were really dominating. And, uh, you know, the recruiting production was up. And, you know, they were finally starting to get in the red for that agency that had been in, you know, or, you know, getting the black from an agency that had been in the red forever and a day. And, you know, we built that. And at that point, I always said, you know, our business is not a nine to five Monday through Friday. Our business is when the agents need us. And my philosophy has always been 24-7, 365. And, you know, that's where the partnership with the uh, agent pipeline is. I, I couldn't have asked for a better partner at the time and, and even to today because, you know, J.R. Rucker, you know, Ryan Kimball says, J.R. Rucker is going to be your guy. And, you know, poor JR thrown into the fire. You know, I'm texting him. You know, it's a three-hour time difference. And, and, you know, I'm like, you know, JR, why are you sleeping at 1 in the morning? I need a PDF. And, you know, he has been beyond uh, the reason why we're successful. Um, Kim Workman, who, you know, works side-by-side -side with JR Rucker, you know, I can text her late at night, early in the morning. 
I know they're working on it, and they all have the same passion that, that my wife and I do to make sure that we get back to the agent right away. You know, again, I, I've been to a lot of insurance agencies, not agencies, but companies, you know, like the Mutual of Omaha, Guardian, One America, all these others. And they, a lot of the upper management are always talking about, you know, always remember what it's like being an agent. I started out as an agent. But really, it's lip service because no matter what, they're getting paid every day. But these agents that are out there every day in the front line, you know, we don't know what position they're in financially. And, you know, if an agent gets a hold of us, the reason we answer that call, no matter what time it is, the text, the emails, we don't know what position that agent is in financially. I mean, they could have written a thousand apps last year, but spent all their money on medical bills or, you know, child support or food or college or whatever. So we want to, no matter what agent it is, we want to get back to them immediately. And we want to take the road, you know, all the blocks and the, and the you know, road bumps out of the way for them to be successful. And that's what we've always done. And it's, it's kept agents loyal to us. It's kept them, you know, where they want to be with us. And, you know, I never take that for granted. And I've always said, you know, make sure you take care of the agent 100%. And, you know, it's not just about being their upline. It's about, you know, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to, I don't need to have, you know, thousands and thousands of agents. And I don't want the 80-20 rule where, you know, 20% is right in all the business. I want the 80-20 rule of 80% of our agents are writing business and they're getting the support that they need to do that and to be successful. So, you know, we, we've done that. We've only recruited by referral. And, you know, by referral, it, it makes the agent feel like they're part of your agency when that agent comes on, they already know a little bit about you and about, you know, that we're going to get back to them. And, and we're not the ones telling them what we're going to do. It's another agent telling them what we do for them and why we really are in their court and why any other, you know, MGA, GA, IMO, FMO, you know, the whole litany of them, why we're one of the best of the best for them. And, you know, that's why we're, we're big on Starbucks gift cards, you know, because, uh, or, you know, we mail check to them so they remember our name. But we do the Starbucks gift cards. If an agent refers somebody to us and we give them a $50 gift card, and then that agent using that Starbucks card, and then when it's down to zero, they want to refill it, they're going to refer somebody else to you. And, you know, it's worked out for us for a long time. And it, it's just, Caring about the agent and, and yeah. don't take it for <clears throat> granted. They have choices. Every single day they could move somewhere else. They have a choice, and you want them not to ever have that. You want them to say, you are what has helped me get to where I want to be. Yeah, I think, you know, I, as, as you know, service is one of the core values of integrity. And at the end of the day, we are a service company, um, and – that is that is one of those things I'm super passionate about because I, I believe that 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 the agents are our customers, <clears throat> and it's incumbent upon us to just provide the best service possible for agents and agencies that we work with to make sure that they um, just have a, a a really incredible experience. Um, and part of that, one of our other core values is family. And we look at agents as, you know, our overall family. Um, and, and I just, you know, I just feel like it's <clears throat> important for us to treat people with respect, which is another core value of ours, um, and really um, just see them as people and as not just a number, but ways that we can really help come alongside them, help them build their business. And part of that is really sharing about ourselves and, and really getting to know people. And, and one of the things I love getting to know you through this pro process is about your family. Um, and every, every transaction, every deal that we, we do, every partnership uh, that we, we have here at Integrity, we have a project name. Uh, we, we have a code name that goes along with it. Um, and you had a very unique project name that, uh, that you asked us uh, to, 
to make sure that we uh, called your your deal. Um, and you even said you, you laid out a gauntlet that you wanted it done in so many days. And it was Project 44 uh, that you wanted it to be called, and you wanted it to be done from start to finish in 44 days, um, which was one of the most audacious. Our, our typical deal takes 60 to 90 days. But you said, guys, if you want to do this, we want to be done in 44 days, and I want to be called Project 44. Would you mind sharing a little bit more about the significance of that number to you and and why um, you even work harder because of it? Well, um, it's it's funny when you bring that up because, you know, when I uh, even talk to Eric and uh, Peterson and, you know, it, it seems like obviously you guys do your due diligence and background on anybody, which I'm impressed with. Um, but, you know, Brian or Eric had brought it up. And then when you and I and, and Eric had all talked and, and, you know, you had actually known about the 44 and, and one of the things that really put me over the top is when, you know, you had said to everybody on the call, you know, we will get this one closed in 44 days because 44 is very, very close to Jay's heart. Um, you know, when I was at the Guardian in 07 and uh, my daughter, Chelsea, who was 15 and a half at the time, um, was diagnosed. She was a stud basketball player, volleyball, you know, uh, softball, and she was diagnosed with cancer. And it was a rare form, and, and you know, it seems like everybody's cancer is rare form. And... Mm-hmm. You know, from that point, my world stopped. And, you know, when I sat back after we were told that diagnosis, you know, it's like, holy cow, this is like a punch to the to the face. And, you know, you're like, how do you even deal with it? And for seven months, we, you know, lived at Children's Hospital in Seattle. And, you know, my wife and I, my ex-wife and her husband, the, the commitment – you know, my wife and my ex-wife had said is that Chelsea will have somebody with her from day one. And, you know, she'll never be alone at the hospital. And they made that happen. And, you know, I was part of it. And Alan was part of it and everything else. But, you know, that was one of the hardest times in our world. And, you know, the high school came to us and said, you know, hey, we want to retire her number. And, you know, that was that was something else. And they wanted to honor her during that season. And she passed away, and she wanted to make it through Christmas uh, in uh, 2007. And so uh, she was in the hospital, and she made it two minutes past Christmas, uh, 1202, December 26th, passed away. And, you know, from that point forward, it was, you know, trying to, to recruit, you know, get our minds set. And, you know, one of my friends came up to me and said, you know, we need to do something for her. And it made me think of two weeks prior to her passing, I was at, I was sitting with her, and she goes, Dad, when I pass, and she knew this, when, when I pass, I want you to set up scholarship for girls, volleyball, basketball, for Ferndale High School. And I'm like, okay, well, let's hope you're around for that. Let's just, you know, and obviously she passed away. And, you know, the guy who, you know, said, let's do something, he ended up getting a golf tournament going, and it, let's put money in a hat. And that thing kept growing and growing and growing because of the community. And 44 was like, the, you know, the, the leader of that, you know, Chelsea, number 44, her retired number at the school. And so we, you know, we did so many things in her name for 10 years. It was, you know, and every year we did it, we would have a, a golf tournament. It became a, a a big auction and a dinner. We'd have between 15 and 20 NFL players there every single week, every single year, you know, autographs, and, and it was great for so many people. And, you know, for 10 years I had to relive, you know, that seven months you know, telling my story and everybody telling me their story and, and it wears you down to enough. But it grew way bigger than we had ever anticipated. I mean, we ended up bringing in, I think it was a little over $3 million in the 10 years. Um, 100% went back into the community, which, you know, a lot of these, you know, 
different, uh, you know, they're great causes, but a lot of the money doesn't go back to where it should. And so, you know, we ended up taking that $3 million over that those years, and, and we bought, like, canines for the sheriff department. We did a ton of Make-A-Wish. We helped the wounded warriors. Um, not only did we, you know, do the canines for the sheriff because, you know, it would help the community as a whole getting more drugs off the street. The military veterans who were being left to the side, wounded warriors, because of Under Armour, you know, I was, and I'm big into Under Armour, that was a big deal. Um, you know, we did uh, new football helmets for the high school, the entire varsity JV and C team, so they had these better helmets that were a little better for concussions, which has been a big deal. We did all the scholarships. We ended up growing the scholarships not only for girls' basketball and volleyball, but we did it for all the schools in the whole Whatcom County. We did, you know, scoreboards. We did backboards for uh, boys and girls clubs. Um, you know, just uh, even like for uh, the police department, the, the CSI department, which is usually the most underfunded, we bought them drones so they could go out Oh, wow. And, you know, crime scenes, they could uh, send a drone in before people went in. I mean, there's a lot of these things that were really cool to me. But in the in the 10th year, I was worn down. We decided, let's just, you know, call this the last year. And I wanted to put a room in the hospital in Chelsea's name. And the reason I want to do that is because let's, you know, like when we did the canines, we did these, it was for the entire community. And there was, there's 55,000 kids that are treated at the hospital on a yearly basis. And I was looking at it going, most of them have two and a half siblings. So you're looking at, you know, over 100,000 kids sitting out in the waiting room doing nothing. And so let's make a really nice waiting room for kids, TVs, coloring, toys on the wall, you know, things like that for the kids. And have a sports theme for what Chelsea loves, which we did. And that was the final, I guess, pinnacle. <clears throat> and it took us almost two years to get that done. I mean, most people think, hey, you want to put a room in the hospital, just write them a check. Well, it doesn't work that way. I mean, you got to get seven different departments to approve it. And, you know, so we finally did. And it's there in, you know, Chelsea's room. And it's, it's really obviously close to all of our hearts. But, you know, when, when, you know, 40, when we wanted to close in 44 days, Brian, you know, for me, it was no big deal, but, you know, for Eric and, the and you know, Price Waterhouse and all these other people, that, that's really uh, pushing the envelope a little bit, that's for sure. <laughs> so, but it, it meant a lot to us, and I really appreciate it, and, and you know, that, that gives you a little bit of background about Chelsea, and, and, you know, I know you've brought that up a few times, and it means a lot to me, let me tell you. Well, I man, I appreciate you sharing that. As as I think you know, I lost a son in 2012, and uh, and it's it's uh, it's it's one of those things you you do what you can to um, to keep that legacy going, um, and it's something that we set up a small foundation for. Ty, that's my son, that passed away, and um, uh, we have not done nearly what you've done, but man, it's inspiring to hear, and and so. When you shared that story with us, um, it was one of those things for our team that we said, man, we are going to make this happen because here at Integrity, one of our core values is family. And uh, and it, it was something that was just um, inspirational, frankly, for all of us to uh, try to rally around and make sure that we um, honored Chelsea um, even um, you know during this process. And so we thank you for... Jay, listen, man, we thank you for being our partner. We thank you for um, trusting us with this. Um, I, I, Ryan Kimball and Kim and, and JR and the entire team at Agent Pipeline uh, just adores working with you and just loves the opportunity that they have to work with you, and, and, um, and as, as do we. And now as we're partners, um, I can't wait to look for ways that we can all give back together uh, to your local community but also just – uh, just to Americans overall, and that's really kind of part of the whole passion that that I have is to make sure that we're there for Americans when they need these products the most. Um, and you and I have been there; we've been through that. Um, 
uh, with, with our own kids, but, um, being able to be there for people's parents and, and other things is just a, a huge, huge uh, honor for us. And so, uh, Jay, I want to tell you, thank you for, for again, joining us, uh, here at Integrity. You and Stephanie are special people and, and we're proud to call you partners. And, uh, we are excited to start off 2021 with you being our first guest on Inspire. Uh, because we think that this is the heart of everything we do, serving the agents, taking care of our families, and looking ways to serve others. And so um, thank you, my friend. I really appreciate you more than you know, and, and I'm, I'm truly honored to be your partner. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Well, let's make 2021 be about serving others, about deepening this family, uh, adding more family members to, together, but also looking for ways for us to um, to serve each other better and to love each other more. Um, and so I just want to tell everybody, thank you for all you did in 2020. Uh, 2021 is going to be an incredible year, and, and there's nobody else I would rather be in business with than all of you. And so I hope everybody has a blessed new year, and, uh, and I can't wait to see what we can do in 2021. So Jay, thank you again for joining us today. I really appreciate you. Uh, we hope everybody has a blessed uh, week, and I uh, can't wait to share some exciting news with you next week as well. But uh, uh, God bless you all, and Happy New Year. Take care.